Hello, we are DEP Silver Team, and this is our senior design project. DEP stands for Distributed Electric Propulsion. This means to have an aircraft with smaller electric motors and a wingspan that must be relatively large to distribute the propulsion output across the wing evenly, therefore increasing its efficiency outputs. The team's project goals and objectives pertain to what we wanted to do, since we didn't have a stakeholder. As listed here, the group was given three objectives from the NASA project guidelines, while we came up with four of our own to specify what our design constraints are. The objectives given to us were a minimum wingspan of 36 inches, being all electric and having multiple motors. The goals were to have an efficiency of 80% for the entire aircraft, a maximum budget of 2,000, having modularity, meaning we can design and assemble the aircraft in parts in case of any damages. We also wanted to have multiple functionalities to prevent failures in case of any emergencies that may occur during flight. The broad impact of DEP technology include the reduced noise pollution during flight and increased propulsive efficiency for all flight scenarios, as well as greater efficiency for takeoff and landing. Furthermore, DEP technology offers a more carbon neutral approach to propulsion in comparison to conventional combustion engines. Prior to assembling our aircraft, our team ran a series of different tests in order to determine key characteristics needed to achieve flight. Utilizing measurement tools within Fusion 360 allowed our team to locate the center of gravity for the aircraft as well as design the battery pack to be relocated in order to adjust the CG. Along with analyzing the wing deflection under static load, the team used Fusion 360's generative design feature to create a wishbone part in order to strengthen the wing. With design completed and manufacturing in progress, our team began fitment and physical testing of the lightweight PLA parts. These tests included verifying the strength of epoxy joints and ensuring seamless fits and proper joint connection amongst each part. Once our aircraft was complete, the flight controller was configured along with a low speed and high speed taxi to verify servo and flight controller functionality. This led to our final test being a touch and go taxi, ensuring the aircraft could get off the ground and verifying our aircraft stall speed. In order to achieve the desired flight characteristics and performance metrics, a flight controller is incorporated. A flight controller gathers data through sensors to produce a desired output. For distributed electric propulsion, these outputs include the control of multiple motors, ability to cut the EDF, and in-flight stability and autonomy capabilities. Custom scripts can be used to implement features such as flap runs, which allow for the same control surface to be used as ailerons and flaps. A flight controller gives the ability to pull data logging for troubleshooting, such as magnetic interferences and telemetry output capabilities. The telemetry output is used to actively display airspeed, angle of attack, and the highest EC temperatures through a heads-up display. In order to meet the DEP requirements for multiple motors, we have incorporated six wing-mounted motors along with a ducted fan, which is utilized for takeoff assistance. Brushless motors can achieve efficiencies up to 90%. The T-motor brushless motors that we will be using have a maximum efficiency of up to 87%. With the LiPo batteries, wire gauges, and electronic configurations being used, we achieve an actual efficiency of 86.4%. Lithium polymer batteries are being used over lion packs due to LiPos having the highest energy density, allowing for the most energy to be stored and transported for the same amount of volume. By utilizing an EDF for takeoff assistance, we are able to achieve shorter takeoff times as well as increase the thrust to weight ratio at any given time for advanced maneuvering. A unique technique aspect of this project was utilization of general design in the collaboration with Autodesk to increase the structural rigidity of the connection between the wing and fuselage. We were able to input design goals into the general design software along with parameters such as performance or spatial requirements, materials, manufacturing methods, and cost constraints. The software explores all the possible iterations of a solution, quickly generating design alternatives. It tests and learns from each additional iteration and determines what works and what does not. DEP Silver Team has collectively agreed that the biggest lesson learned is to always be prepared for the unexpected. In order to do so, the team should communicate with the customers to establish their wants and needs, actively exchanging ideas between the team and sponsors throughout the whole design process. By developing task-oriented milestones documented in the use of a Gantt chart, the team is able to actively monitor and determine if and when they have met certain stages in the design and production process. Originally, we were going to use the NACA 2415, but ultimately decided on the Clark Y airfoil shape for the main wing due to its stall characteristics and better performance at lower angles of attack. Using a thicker Clark Y airfoil helps us avoid severe leading edge stalls, which are a problem with thinner airfoils. 
Thicker airfoils like the Clark Y are more susceptible to trailing edge stalls, which are more manageable due to the gradual decrease in drag. For the horizontal and vertical stabilizers, a symmetrical NACA 0012 airfoil was selected due to its ubiquity in RC aircraft and greater lift at slow speeds. Regarding the incorporation of prop fans, relevant simulations for the prop fans effect on the wing were investigated. A turbulent flow model was selected while boundary conditions associated with cruising flight speed conditions were selected to represent the physical system. In this velocity contour chart, we are able to see a 2D plane view of the flow field. We can see a slowdown of velocity magnitude as the air enters the prop fan and below the wing as well. This right here is what we associate as the drag effect which, with using the prop fans. However, there is also a substantial velocity increase just right after the prop fans as well, i.e. a change of momentum leading to thrust. In our next figure over here, we can see a pressure contour plot. The pressure contour plot shows us the pressure magnitude distribution across the flow field. Regarding the wing, the highest pressure is seen to be at the front of the wing, i.e. the stagnation point sees the highest pressure. For the prop fans, there is a substantial pressure jump across the prop fan. Intuitively, this makes sense as the high pressure region is pushing the wing forward, i.e. thrust. From this simulation, we can see that the prop fans are doing their job very well and providing a strong amount of thrust to propel the plane. So the incorporations of the prop fans ultimately pro proved to be a necessary design expenditure. The motivation behind this project was to ultimately help show industry possible configurations of the distributed electric propulsion. As our industry evolves and goes through the motions of evaluating possible future technology for net zero carbon flight, ambitious but practical ideas are absolutely necessary. For this project, we wanted to ultimately show somewhat an athletic but flight efficient aircraft that can accomplish espionage missions. We wanted to be able to prove that this configuration of distributed electric propulsion can be a competitive option for missions such as this, and that can one day be regarded among the greatest spy planes such as the U-2 Dragon Lady, and the SR-71 Blackbird while also achieving net zero carbon flight. The group strived at creating a unique design which allowed our creativity to be detailed and precise. The most efficient way to achieve this goal was to use Fusion 360 and 3D print our aircraft. The team used a PLA material called polyair to determine the structural integrity of specific geometric shapes. Since the polyair material is relatively heavy, the team decided on reaching out to different companies to obtain a lightweight PLA. The team was able to partner with Meteor Hacker and used their color fab lightweight PLA. The material was 40% of the weight of polyair while maintain, maintaining the structural integrity. The team did use the polyair PLA for components experiencing higher loadings. When we started the design process, we decided to split our group into four teams, the fuselage, the restabilizer, the main wing, and pre-processing materials and manufacturing. Since the groups were split up with two people in each team, the workload and responsibilities were delegated throughout the group evenly, making the decision process smooth since only two people would design a single section and not all seven of us. Each group had one person to communicate with the other groups for information and calculations, as well as the full design of the section for the aircraft. After the geometric designs were finished in each group, the members would divide and conquer with their specialties in specific areas like circuitry, soldering, and material fitment. Most of these tasks were assigned in the Gantt chart, allowing group leads and team lead to check in on progress if group members were not able to attend meetings. If meeting times were difficult, we would utilize the Discord chat that was broken down and organized to make it easy to find information as quickly as possible. Throughout the design process, our team strived to bring a unique set of components to the project. From electric ducted fans located within the fuselage to being completely 3D printed, our team wanted our aircraft to stand out from the others. These unique qualities brought about challenges that our team would later face within the manufacturing process. Some of these main challenges being the cost to manufacture the aircraft and the weight after manufacturing. Being a non-sponsored project allowed us to have the creative freedom our team desired, but restricted us on funding. Understanding that the cost of materials and key components needed would later pose a threat during manufacturing, our team decided to begin outreaching. We would go on to create a sponsorship outreach pamphlet describing the purpose and goals of our project, as well as ways that others could help bring this project to life. What started as just asking friends and families for a donation led to full company sponsorship. Thanks to Matter Hackers and ColorFab, we were able to receive over five spools of lightweight PLA, which would prove to be more than enough for manufacturing and a lighter alternative to 3D printing material. With material and costs out of the way, our team was able to focus on other obstacles as we continue to design and manufacture our aircraft. Stakeholders for our team are the members of the group and our sponsor, Matter Hacker. Our sponsor is a 3D printing company that supplied the team with all of our final design material. Meta Hacker's only request was to have their logo advertised on our aircraft. 
but the team was a major stakeholder, allowing us to make the final crucial changes during the designing phase of the aircraft. The team was also able to secure a required amount of funding from individual members of the community. The team would like to thank all our sponsors for funding our project. Thank you.